Hello and welcome to Talk Gnosis. My name is Deacon John, and I'm speaking today to the Reverend James Ishmael Ford. Hello, James. Um, uh, you're going to find out all about James, his, his fascinating life, career, thought, in a moment, but we're going to be talking about mysticism, Unitarianism, Zen, the independent sacramental movement, uh, uh, so much more. But before we get to this, uh, we, we got to, uh, you know, on, on a spiritual journey, you have to get through some rough parts, right? You, you have to, <laughs> you, you, like Dante, you, you go to hell first, and then you ascend to heaven. So before we get to this great conversation, uh, I have to be your Virgil and take you through our commercial for supporting us financially. Uh, we can't do the show without your financial help. So for as little as a dollar per piece of media per month, you can sign up at Patreon as a subscription. We give you early access to the shows. Uh, we try to do more than what we charge every month. Lately, our, our schedule has been a bit a little messy, but we're hoping to get that back up. And if there's anything as a patron you want from us, you can just message me and I'll try to uh, give it to you. Now, you can also do one time time donations and i've actually been giving the wrong address for this i was wondering how come we haven't been getting any one-time donations i've been saying paypal.com slash gnostic it's actually paypal.me slash gnostic so if you want to do a one-time donation that's not recurring you can go to paypal.me slash gnostic uh sorry so much uh, about that for people who have tried in the past but I, I did get an email from somebody trying to set that up i don't know if they want to be publicly named on the show Maybe they're a secret Gnostic, but you know who you are. So thank you so much for sending us that email. Okay, so uh, the uh, the commercial's over. It's time to ascend. You know the the way the way up is the way down, as the Gnostics once said. Uh, James, uh, for people not familiar with you and your work, uh, I, I mean you you've kind of been through most of the important religious movements and developments in America. <laughs> since in, in the last couple of generations. So could you tell us a little bit about, you know, your early interest in religion, uh, how you found the paths that you found, and the, that's paths with an S, and if you could tell us a, a bit about those those paths. Sure, sure. Well, um, I was raised a fundamentalist Christian, um, mostly in California, born in, born in California, and um, we were independent Baptists, so the, the my well polished line on the subject is that that we considered uh, Southern Baptists uh, dangerously liberal, and 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 American Baptists were clearly not Christians. So that th that background. Uh, on the other hand, my my maternal grandmother, who was the spiritual ma matriarch, really was my first spiritual teacher, and she did have. Um, um, some wisdom about her. Um, she she lived in kind of angelic realms, you know, uh, spirit realms, and and um, you know that touched me. Uh, the other the other real influence in my life was my my father, who was a uh, Robert Ingersoll. Uh, well, I was going to say Ingersoll always used the word agnostic, but but you know, actually he was a mocking atheist. And, you know, kind of going for the low hanging fruit, you know, the corners of the earth and big fish swallowing uh, um, human beings and, and, and such such things. Uh, by the time I was an adolescent, I, 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 you know, kind of went with my father's version and but but not not at least so far as to reject my my. The, you know the childish religious Christianity that I had and began a you know but began a quest rather than than simply moving out of the realm of religion brief flirtation with Vedanta uh, loved loved all that English expat stuff you know Gerald Hurd and Aldous Huxley and uh, um, especially Christopher Isherwood and from from there you know I actually went and visited a a, a, a Vedanta temple in berkeley california and 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 for me at whatever i was 17 whatever somewhere in that ballpark uh the pews put me off <laughs> <laughs> uh uh i i uh not long after that uh i you know i did the the late 1960s san francisco bay area that's where i touched you know most of the the the, the major religions of the of uh, on offer uh, in the in 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 that period, 
um, I began to sit with the San Francisco Zen Center. I was a great admirer of Shunro Suzuki, uh, um, although I really, I sat in the Berkeley Zendo, and so I only heard him give give talks. I, uh, when a British uh, Zen teacher fresh out of Japan came, came by, I ended up becoming her student, um, ordained with her, lived the monastic life for just under three years, uh, um, received various ordinations and things and left. And then I, I thought it was done. Uh, I resumed a, with Zen and resumed kind of a quest. That's where I ran into the independent sacramentals uh, of several varieties and um, flirted. Then um, um, it, also the the universalist Sufis, you know, the Anayat Khan, gang and then and then finally found my what became my path which was a a blending of of the zen buddhist practice in a householder tradition emphasizing the the the, the koan tradition which we can unpack if you want and uh um at the same time attending unitarian universalist churches which kind of appealed to my a it allowed me a western context and b it allowed me full full range of the rational and humanistic parts of my of my heart and you know, in that they, they really complemented each other. The Zen that I practiced was kind of like a spiritual gym. It had a rigorous discipline, but no, no social life, no, no, no communal, you know, aspect to it uh, to speak of. And, and the, while Unitarian Universalism had communal down, you know, pat, but <laughs> no discernible spiritual part. Uh, so, so for me, it was peanut butter and jelly and, you know, I rolled with it for, as you pointed out, generations. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I I think that that that's a common complaint about both uh, Unitarian Universalism, but but also the more liberal traditions in general, right? Which, which is actually my background, and I've talked about it on, on the show before. That that some people, um, and I'm not I'm not trying to be critical of these traditions at all, right? Because it's some people's experiences, you know, are are looking for that that uh that mysticism that that spiritual connection uh and are are finding you know a really healthy community that is really living out their values but but some people do find some something lacking and, and that's almost a, a stereotype or a cliche or or a criticism of these more liberal traditions and, and sometimes it comes from a from a place of superiority which is, which is what i'm not trying to do which is oh you know i'm a I'm a Buddhist. I'm a Gnostic. I'm uh, I'm a witch. I'm a meditator. I'm a Vedanta, and you know, I'm I'm entering the spiritual realms. Well, these people have just made a uh, a secular version of uh, of these powerful traditions, right? So that that's not what I'm trying to say. But do you, with this criticism and and with your sort of dual backgrounds, do you, do you see some more room for say mysticism, spiritual practice within Unitarianism and the liberal traditions, or is it best to to sort of uh, do what you did um, and, uh, and and have these different parts of your life and sort of explore? And then you know you know you have your community, which is still you know a, a religious community at the end of the day, depending on you know how you're defining religion, but definitely in my definition. So so yeah, uh, that, could you speak on that a bit? Sure, sure, absolutely. Well, and you know specifically to Zen and Unitarian universalism is you know i'm talking about the traditions you know 50 years ago and 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 you know, a lot of water has gone under that bridge and 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 there are absolutely aspects of the spirit of spirituality and the mystical traditions that one can access through unitarian universalism um, and other progressive and liberal churches i think the one actually that has probably become the most integrated over these last 50 years that i've witnessed uh is the the episcopal anglican tradition which has you know had all the parts but was you know just really too caught up in class consciousness and and uh uh, um, um, the, it, it, being the representative of you know of of the Republican Party at prayer, and and it, somehow in the last fifty years it really it it broke away from that you know it, to considerable cost and schisms around the edges, but but you know often if you're looking for a mystical tradition that is supported in a you know in a large large more or less successful I mean I think one of my Episcopal 
uh, clergy colleagues once said uh, of me as a Unitarian said that uh, they, the Episcopalians, lose more members in a year than we have. So, yeah. <laughs> so there is that as well. But you know that Celtic, the stream of Celtic mysticism things is now really accessible in the Episcopal Church in a way that it was not fifty years ago. So you know, um, I the other church I really know is the the United Church of Christ, which is that kind of broad liberal. It's mainly con congregationalist, but it has other streams running into this uh, hodgepodge. Um, I've seen, you know, um, mainly actually I've seen Zen Christians come out of that, you know, uh, which is another thing that's really dear to my heart. Something I'm, I'm paying close attention to these days is the, the meeting of Christianity and Zen Buddhism and, and the emergence of some actual teachers you know, in, in within lineage uh, which is just utterly fascinating so you know and and similarly zen buddhism there are there are uh zen communities that now pay attention to the communal part of it not a lot of them and they tend to be quite small um of the larger more successful i think of like in toledo ohio the you know great heartland zen buddhist community full-on church you know and as you know a center of zen practice uh, where you can do kind of really deep work so you know uh, it all changes uh, i i i really yeah i am only speaking for my my path and my path is defined by you know when i was born what was accessible to me and you know where you know and the years that have followed out of that yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you mentioned uh, on your Zen path that that you're part of a householder tradition, and I actually, uh, you know, my my two day jobs are uh, I'm a freelance copywriter, and uh, I, I teach meditation in uh, in mindfulness. You know, secular meditation, secular mindfulness, uh, which we can talk about in some of my quandaries about that. But you know, one of the criticisms that that I'm paying attention to now about Western Buddhism and then even secular mindfulness, which is in some ways is distilled from forms of Buddhism, uh, is that the, the, these are monastic traditions, right? And we're taking a little piece of a monastic tradition, giving it to people who have to live day-to-day -day lives. And maybe that's not always psychologically healthy for them, right? You know, some of the Theravadan practices are really about breaking your connections, right? From to materiality, to physicality, to the world around you. Uh, so I, I'm wondering if you if you can kind of talk about what, what a householder tradition is, or if you can maybe touch on on some of the, the tensions between wanting to be a contemplative and a meditator and these these monastic backgrounds. And of course, how much easier it'd be if we were we were all monks. <laughs> well, right. I mean, Buddha, speaking of Buddhism specifically, it, it it is a monastic tradition. You know, yeah. uh, it's you know the, the normative or mainstream currents are are monasticism. The original definition of of the Buddhist sangha was for monks or for nuns. Uh, it it was you know, and householders didn't didn't even feature into the definition. It, now, relatively quickly, to the degree we can you know discern whatever the the actual historical. Uh, context the 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 script there, there are some major problems with the cano canonical literature about you know and his historicity but but fairly quickly there was a fourfold song uh, you know uh, monks nuns lay men lay women um and and so there you know and it continues Theravadans do have a harder time to you know in adapting because they 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 continue that way many actually but but mahayana has always been a little bit messier in the vajrayana there are you know there 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 are even what appear to be lay lineages there's certainly householder teachers that are you know fully integrated into their into their cultural schemes if you go to you know uh Nepo, you know uh, bhutan or or the 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 you know tibet to the well to the edges of tibet these days um, um zen zen emerges in china and it's often much of it is a comp you know is a, is out of a dialogue with a uh, a powerful ancient um uh tradition that's not particularly uh, supportive of monasticism and and as the myth of the Zen lineage emerges emerges into history, you know, um, it it um, 
always has householder options, you know, mm-hmm. from the from the foundation literature, um, um, and and in practice, now they they tend not to be sustaining lineages. They're simply you know individuals who are acknowledged, and the and the lineages tended. Uh, well, always existed within the monastic communities. It, when it gets to Japan, things get kind of screwed up because of uh, historical usages and a and a non celibate uh, cler- clergy arise. More like I, I, a crude analogy would be um, Japanese Buddhism is to Chinese Buddhism is Anglicanism is to uh, to Catholicism. Um, but but very crude, you know. And, uh, but but um, <clears throat> it isn't actually until the 20th century that you start seeing Zen lineages that have, you know, that 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 ex- lineages that extend out that are householder oriented, and there are not many of them. Um, although one of them, the the, uh, the what the Senbo Kyodan or Senbo Zen these days, and and that. The lineage that comes out of that is massively influ- influential on Zen coming to the West, but but is you know a tiny cult in the, in Japan. So uh, so yeah, there's constant uh, concerns with with monastic urges and monastic assumptions, and we 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 bump into that in the, those who are interested in ordination in the Japanese lineages in in America, non celibate, but they do expect that the, the formation is monastic, and and a lot of struggle over what that means and how much time you have to be in a monastery. Um, uh, something I've been interested in, but frankly, these days it's not part of my waning years. Yeah. Um. So you're mentioning your waning years, and you know, I, 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 this is the first time we've met. You know, I, I've admired your work for 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 a while. Um, so th- th- this is an overly personal question, but I, but I'm assuming you're you're thinking about your about the future. You're thinking about what you're what you're going to leave behind. Uh, you're thinking about the future of Zen in America, and you, know, I, I haven't done a lot of research on this, but but I've heard in general that. The Western Buddhism is is starting to see a decline. That religion in general in the West, in many ways, organized religion in, in uh, not just Christianity and Christian forms are, are seeing a decline. So I, I'm wondering if, if any of this is going through your head, or or what you're thinking about for the next generation with Zen, or or if you're just going to leave it up to the next generation. I don't know. So, um, uh, so I was wondering if you could speak to that. Sure. Well, I mean, it's it's not going to be in my hands. That's for sure. Yeah for sure but but i you know speaking specifically to zen there there is what what i've kind of ungraciously called the great die off uh coming and i've written about that on a couple of occasions um <clears throat> definitely the my generation the boomer generation uh um at least a part of it had an obsession with religion and populated the western landscape with with all these alternative religions uh um uh and which with with a degree of interest that is not equaled in subsequent generations at one point i even thought oh well maybe zen in the west again speaking specifically was just a you know an aberration historical aberration it just belonged to a little blip belong to my people but but it turns out you know as as uh, you know as we now have what two two kind of fully formed generations uh, uh, rolling along since and 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 if you break you know the boomer is too big a time frame and you know you probably need to break it into two as well but but whatever two or three and and um what we're seeing is uh, among many interesting and sometimes weird things it to me is is that uh um, it's going to continue uh, but it's going to but there are going to be fewer in the you know in the zen world america itself is is a massively religious um culture um we do see trend lines that suggest moving like towards europe but uh, and, and Japan, interestingly, uh, uh, is very non-religious. I mean, it's really yeah, interesting. Um, but 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 
uh, um, I think it's going it, it, to, religion's not going away, uh, but it's, but it's having, but it's, it's mutating and say, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of questions, you know, the breaking out of spirituality from religion, the, you know, the, as a line um, and the necessary reconfiguration, because, you know, in reality, these, these, these are not unravel, ravelable terms, uh, uh, but there can be more mature understanding. So what, you know, what religion is. And, you know, religion tends to be, in my my view, much more useful when it's minority. You know, it, the bad things happen when they get in charge, you know, then all the corruption really, really gets to roll. Yeah. Well, every every Gnostic uh, watching and listening uh, <laughs> rejoiced at that statement. So... <laughs> Um, so, so James, I, I'm gonna suddenly I feel like I'm being overly negative and just asking you to to answer all all of the questions that are that are that are being thrown at uh, Western mindfulness and Buddhism. But uh, I, I I've heard the, the criticism of Western Buddhism that you know it, it was it was mostly the boomers. Uh, like obviously there was an earlier generation than the boomers, right? right. Um, yeah, uh, particularly with Zen. Uh, but but the boomers kind of shape Western Buddhism in to answer their needs, right? In in a form that 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 is best for them. And that uh, that is is not doing so great with, with with the younger generations, and I sometimes wonder, you know, maybe particularly with my own community or a lot of modern Gnosticism, where it really seems to be Generation X focused, right? And I'm I'm Generation X, so I wonder, oh, is there, is there all these Generation X biases that I'm not even noticing? So, so I'm wondering if you can if you can talk about this this boomerization of Western Buddhism, if you think that's a uh, uh, a valid complaint, a non valid complaint, or or how we work with that. Sure, sure. Um, um, well, uh, complaint, acknowledgement, noticing, you know, I mean, these terms are, you know, you know they're, they're all value freighted. And, um, yeah, the fact on the ground is a religion comes into another culture, there is a dialogue. Um, uh, things happen that are healthy, things happen that are not healthy. You know, I mean, Zen, the Zen I, I practice, you know, bears very, you know, it bears a lot it has a lot in common with its formations in you know the, the eighth and ninth centuries of the common era um in china um has a lot less uh um uh, if you you know in common with theravadan buddhism for instance and uh um um and and even yes, and the Japanese version that I practice uh, is not a Japanese version. It, it is it is a Japanese. The, even the teachers who came, you know, the, most of the the Japanese teachers who came to the West were themselves eccentrics, you know, because Japan is you know like many ancient cultures, uh, you know, very xenophobic, and the the thought of leaving the center of the universe. Uh, um, is, you know, is for, you know, um, people who don't fit in, you know, and, and, and indeed, you know, with a few notable exceptions, uh, um, the, the Zen teachers who came to the West were trying to get away from, from, you know, the, the culture that they were in, and they threw their, their lot in with, you know, with early 1960s, uh, late 1960s uh, American culture, but for, for good and for ill, you know, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of personal, you know, it really emphasized the individual. Um, we, you know, our generation was a breaking out of the, the constrictions of the 1950s and the, you know, and then, you know, our parents were, you know, uh, somewhere along the line, they became the greatest generation. Uh, they weren't the greatest generation to us. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a very conformist culture and, and, uh, had a lot of a lot of shadows and and um so we created new shadows by in, in our rejections um um you know the problem of course in speaking of large groups is that you know it's consists of individuals and you know and there's you know just tons of variations on these themes but you know the the you know the facts on the ground is that this new new group very individualistic um um, quickly, you know, we were caught up in the, you know, we are the beginnings of the, you know, the, of the second feminist wave. Um, um, you can, what is interesting is Zen in, in North America is 
basically gender equal. Um, you know, if you look at the major teachers, you know, women are just as likely as, as men. It's taken 50 years for people of color to begin to emerge, but now there are, you know, a, a handful of, of teachers, a couple of them really considered important, um, who are POC. Um, um, LGBTQ, you know, we, you know, that's kind of one of the things where the liberal traditions across the board um, have, you know, just to say wholeheartedly and instantly would be not true, but, but, but ahead of the curve, you know, if not the point of the spear down at the bevel, uh, you know, in the, you know, early, early adapters. And uh, again, a, few, a handful of, of, of teachers of, of significance have emerged. To, um, so it's, you know, that is the gift of the boomer generation. Within it, the, you know, the shadow was the radical individualism. Um, and 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 now a lot of the reactions you know there's a there's a small subset of younger teachers here in the west if you want to be a teacher sin has evolved in the west has evolved to be it's like a 20 or 30 year process to be a teacher and um um the the workaround is to go to japan spend three years in a monastery and you know so which is not without it's it's no current. So, but, but it, you know, but it also is to produce something that we don't really need in the West, you know, uh, monastic trained parish priests uh, you know, for, for parishes that don't exist. And, and, but an interesting crowd, you know, they've got a boatload of heavy training very fast, um, you know, and they're going to take a few years for themselves to, to sort themselves out um, and finding where, where's the dialogue, you know, um, there is a dialogue. Um, um, dialogue is such a nice phrase. It makes it sound like, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, friendly give and take. Uh, and usually it's a hostile takeover. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but watching them, you know, and then the householder lineages are, you know, having nothing to do with that because they know they're butter their bread is buttered on the how you know on the western side because they're they don't have analogs in in asia uh, or in any significant numbers yeah um so we touched upon you know your your flirtations with the independent sacramental movement and before we started recording uh that james assembled uh, a wonderful collection of very important documents related to the independent sacramental movement which which is scanned and filed and in the ajc archives and uh is very important to us and to future generations doing research on this this very interesting quirky movement so so thank you so much for that but what what did you or what do you find like interesting about the independent sacramental movement? movement you know what, what originally drew your attention back in the 60s and 70s uh, can, can you tell us a little bit about that sure sure um um in my major priestly training was soto and that's a very liturgically driven religious practice it's it's you know it's the sitting zen the med meditation part of it is has always been part of it and and, and a centerpiece but but you know when people would leave the monastery and go back to their temples it was all liturgy you know it's all um um it, you know and that mediation between heaven and earth you know and 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 generally the 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 creation of merit and trans and its transference which is the, the theological thing um <clears throat> when when i left the monastery my my immediate my eye went immediately to western sacramental um, um, communities. If I were going to return to a to a, a, um, such a, a an event, and I looked at the Episcopalians, as I said, they were, you know, really, you know, it was. I mean, the church I, I attended, after, they didn't have coffee hour; they had sherry after. <laughs> uh, and you know, it just, it just, you know, and, and I'm a scruffy kid from the wrong side of the tracks, and. Uh, um, Orthodoxy had its appeals um, 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 with its own, you know, gigantic shadows, and it tended to be, you know, ethnic issues, and um, uh, and and big shadows out of that, and 
<clears throat> so, it, it, and then I became aware of the independent sacramentals. You know, I attended a liberal Catholic church and a congregation in the Bay Area uh, briefly. And, and um, it, in San Diego, I fell in with a, you know, with a, you know, an independent sacramental bishop and, and, it, you know, the, what it offered was like instant ordinations, you know, and, 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 uh, um, and in the moment that meant something to me, you know, I was casting about, I quickly saw that that was not a sustaining thing. And, 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 and for me, the, it, it, when I really looked at independent sacramentals at the, at that time by accident i i did my master's thesis on 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 episcopacy within the independent sacramental movement uh, a long story why that happened but it did and and um um my my view at the time was that there were a, there were a couple of saints uh there were um, a handful of people who were were trying to serve, you know, the, the you know the spiritual world, you know, spiritually, but were misfits, you know, out of structural things, and then an overwhelming percentage of people who simply were damaged and you know uh, wounded humans who who were looking for titles and yeah you know, and and. As the years have proceeded, I think that's still true. You know, um, uh, I think there are a handful of, of, of again, a handful of people who are why. Why I like the yeah you know, your your community is because I think you're real. You know, I mean, you, you know, that you've you have stepped up. You have formation standards. You uh, create communities. You know, they're fragile. They're very small, but. They exist, and uh, it's not just people who who aspire to hats, and 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 um, you know I watched you know I, I have, my heart has a special place for the liberal Catholic movement, and um, 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 and you know I watched and they just can't get it together. You know what was it? I think I just looked like the other day uh, the two major major uh, jurisdictions the liberal in the United States the liberal Catholic Church province of the United States, which is the kind of the, the 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 mainstream of it the the more the theosophical current. You know I think they got three congregations. You know, maybe it's four. Uh, the Liberal Catholic Church International, which was the the only substantial schism that managed to kind of hold together for a while, I think it's got four. You know, yeah. Uh, um, you know, um, but they do each have at least a dozen bishops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, for political reasons I won't talk too much about my criticisms of the ISM, and it also sounds like if I do, right, it it, it sounds like I'm saying, oh, you know, we're I'm so great, I'm so perfect, but uh, definitely a congregation that is uh, uh, or a community that is packed full of bishops is uh, is often the standard. <laughs> so no laity, a room full of bishops, and and honestly, you know, sometimes um, again, not not to say we're so great, but sometimes I look to the AJC and I'm like, you know, being being a bishop is a curse, right? Right? because you're you got to do all you're doing all this work and you're not really getting anything material for it that's right that's right i mean and there it is is that that and there's the difference is that um you guys have inflated titles but 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 that's it <laughs> after that it's just a job and and you, and you really you know and your people really produce you you, you know uh um you know and it's always been impressive to me and i you know that's oh, thank you. part of why i like you guys yeah. Um, well, you, you mentioned theosophy, which uh, in connection to the liberal Catholic Church, which gets me thinking. Um, so, so again, you know, you, you have a, a lot of a formal training in religion, you know, both in university and seminaries. Uh, and uh, you've been through all these different uh, religious traditions. You're engaged with, uh, with different religious traditions. Uh, so there, there's sort of an older view, which actually I was exposed to academically, right? That that is partly from theosophy, partly from earlier anthropology when they're discovering all these different religions and, and noticing similarities, right? An idea that that there's only one religion and all religions are, are aspects of this one religion. Uh, there, there's a perennial tradition that is exactly the same, but just expressed in different symbol sets around the world. And and there's things I like about this view, and and perhaps some aspects that idea is true. But but there's also some some 
uh, difficulties and some unpleasantness sometimes when we when we really tear these ideas apart. So, so again, I always end each of my questions uh, apparently with the same phrase. James, what do you think about that? <laughs> well, I, I do think about that, and yeah. and I have come to some tentative conclusions. Um, I I think that. Um, um, uh, well, there are two really contending and contradictory spirits. The, the word religion itself is, uh, you know, is covers a multitude of sins, and and a major part of religion, maybe the major part of religion, is social cohesion. Uh, when I'm in a bad mood, I call it crowd control, uh, and and you know all the main, you know, all the normative religions. This is their major job is to help the society define itself, um, create the who's on the inside and who's on the outside. Um, you know, purity codes are a hundred percent about, about that. Um, so that's a giant part of the job and, 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 and it's unique to every culture the, 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 every culture needs its definitions and its religious structures, uh, support those. And there's something else, there's a current that occurs in every religion. And I've come to call it naturalistic perennialism. Um, I do not believe that there is an uber, an ur religion um, that, you know, we have, you know, imperfect uh, shadows of. There is no secret tradition in my view that 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 is like the traditionalists would have that is passed on and with its own interestingly quite coherent theological assumptions um, but <clears throat> there is an intuition to uh, um, 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 some mysterious unity and and the 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 in mo in modern religions meaning you know post uh, <laughs> anything that's the, the things that arose in the axial age and and forward uh, uh um there is a mystical current that i identify that itself is you know all over the place uh, but its heart is what uh, you know fits within the non-dual traditions and and um and non-duality i think is the you know the 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 um um, the universal current, but it's a natural impulse and its expressions are unique to specific cultures and religious traditions as, as they evolve. Part of what I like about, about our comparative religious, you know, aspects now is that nobody gets it completely right because there is no true religion. There's just religions. And, and um, so I think what I have found in Zen, especially in the two truths, Nagarjuna's two truths, and the you know, and um, um, is and a um, and especially as it's developed on the ground in the in the Zen tradition, and is formed and found uh, through koan introspection and the heart specific meditation disciplines. Um, um, it's true, you know, but it's also dangerous because it's not a hundred percent true, yeah, and and. And so meeting Advaita Vedanta people, for instance, meeting, and for me, I'm more interested in Christian mystics, uh, especially the rising non-duels, uh, there are challenges, you know, uh, I think some are wrong, um, um, you know, but what do I know? You know, where's the, you know, where's the, you know, and so um, the spiritual path of not knowing, of humility, of, you know, the profound and deep curiosities of the heart, following the the compass towards, you know, the, this sense of, you know, as it says in the, the song of the uh, um, um, uh, Jewel Mir, Mir Samadhi, uh, um, um, you are not it, but in truth, it is you. You know, finding what that actually means uh, is uh, my life. Yeah. yeah. Well, talking about your life's work and, and easy questions, James, I, I guess if you could, could, could tell us where you're at with non-duality because, and, and people who watch and listen to the show regularly know that I'm all over the place with it. I'll probably have a different view next month when I'm talking to a different guest, right. but, but lately I've been really into dialectical monism uh, where I get to have my cake and eat it too, right? Okay, I I don't, as a Gnostic. Right. I don't know the term, but, but, but I, I resonate with the, the, the parts of it. Yeah. yeah.
I mean, yeah, it's it's exactly what it sounds like. But yeah, can you can you like you know sometimes with and again, you know, I keep I keep uh, uh, creating these straw mans and throwing them at you. But uh, at the same time, you know, there's a stream of non dual thought that is like. You know, yeah, there's a parasite eating the, that child's eyes, right? But if you just understood that all is one, that's actually illusionary. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, I, I really, I really struggle struggle with that, and, and I kind of find that taint in in many many forms of non duality in the West. So yeah, if you could tell us, and, and also, you know, the sort of the argument for non duality is that we can experience it. Right through yeah. through meditation and through other ways, but we could also experience non duality by having a massive dose of drugs or a schizophrenic break. Right, so so sometimes for the experiential aspects, the, the which as a Gnostic, you, you know, I, I can be number one on, but. You know, Gnosticism also says maybe you know your experiences and, and your insights. You, you got to be a little bit suspicious there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, you know how I'm going to end this question, uh, this long rambling thesis statement, which is, hey, James, what do you think about that? <laughs> what do you think about non-duality? Tell, tell us where you're at or how you explain it to people or how you're thinking about it uh, after a lifetime of, of pursuing it, I guess. <laughs> sure. I, I explain it badly, uh, um, but, but I, I do try. I mean, I mean, and I'm, my, I, you know, my life is unfolding into that encounter as well. Um, <clears throat> there is a truth to the uh, to the assertion that if, you know everything's wildly interconnected. It's all causally connected. Uh, um, things arise out of causes and conditions, and and the, you know kind of the traditional Buddhist view, and as well as you know more recent non-dual assertions, is that um, <clears throat> um, if you see it truly, y y your mind is at peace. Uh, um, <clears throat> Which, which we know <laughs> turns out in practice to be blaming the victim, you know, and so it tells people, you know, uh, somebody who's been mugged, why did you want to be mugged, you know, um, um, you know, why did you need cancer, you know, um, you know, really, really offensive and, and uh, um, completely misunderstanding the, the, you know, the nature of interconnectedness and 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 non-dual non-dual what i like about your, your um what was it, the dialectical non-duality is that what we miss is that within the you know that everything's wildly open i think that i mean it's really hard to argue that it you know that there is anything with it with an abiding substance it, it, everything exists in in relationship to other things and exists for a moment because other things are all everything's in motion um <laughs> including you know me and and you know and then for whatever reason you know we have the, these brains that perceive the universe you know and you know um not inaccurately simply in a limited way you know we only see, we see small amounts but we see amount enough to to do some rather interesting things in this world um and 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 i'm interested with the you know in that turning towards the mystery and seeing what what it is in my my own internal life and what i see in part is that that the 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 causal universe is totally real i have a certain uh um amount of control over it one of you know some of the the some of the substance you know a there's what i physically can do mentally it's it's clear from from placebo effect and psychosomatic illnesses that there are some there is to some degree the a bio a, a, a feedback mechanism going on in which the 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 the, the mind as we you know, usually define it, um, has some effect on the environment. Um, nowhere near the extreme, you know, the, the, the rather, you know, the, that you, you know, if you want money, think about it. Uh, yeah. Um, but, but, um, but there is a truth within, within that. But I'm interested in, you know, in the really what, well, what is the question of, you know, what is awakening? You know, what is, you know, the, what is the salvific vision? And, and, you know, it turns out it's all in surrender. It's all in, you know, just, you know, you know, you know, it's, it, it is looking, you know, it's Job looking at God, you know, and, and, and maybe God's just saying, I'm very big and you're very small and you better fucking shut up. Yeah. Or it can be, you know, um, this is it, 
you know, lo, I am, you know, the destroyer of worlds. Um, and, and there is an ecstatic, uh, you know, vision and, and, you know, um, and then how does that exist in my ordinary life where I'm, you know, you know, uh, living with my spouse and, you know, Long Beach, California, you know, and, you know, taking care of our Jan's mom, you know, uh, over in, not, we don't live together, but we, we probably will before her ride is over. Um, and, and that, you know, all of that, you know. Well, we're starting to get into the, the wrap-up stage. You know, I've, I've been keeping you for almost an hour now, but uh, the name of the show is Talk Gnosis. Uh, I haven't really gotten into Gnosticism yet. Better ask a question about that. But, uh, you know, what's your engagement with Gnosticism? You know, any past or present interests? You know, things that you like about it, things that, that you don't like about it? It, sure. Well, Western Gnosticism, you know, does romance dualism a little bit more than I have a, a, a taste for. Um, um, and Western Gnostics have a tendency to go for the woo-woo uh, as, as well that, that I simply don't have a taste for. And there is, there, you know, there are currents within the Gnosticism, which is, you know, which I would prefer generally use the word mystical, um, that are totally where it's at you know i mean you know and then it, historically in the western gnostic christian gnostic tradition you know it, you know some of the literature you know the especially you know the, the thomas being the you know the, the premier text uh, for for people for 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 meeting but also um you know i've elaine pagel's whole work with you know on valentinianism and such shows you know a current of of, of spiritual tr religion that that is kept you know fostered preserved continues in the uh um within within the gnostic expressions uh um and i'm you know and you know everybody's mixed up with something wacko and so uh i you know i, I you know <laughs> including me uh and you know we just have different taste buds uh, so that would be my but but i think that the you know like your community specifically is really interested in turning towards the, um, you know, the mystery itself. Uh, yeah. And, and that's the part that I think is, is truly alive. You have this antiquarian current, which I, I, I appreciate in the abstract, uh, but, but uh, uh, is not particularly draw, drawing to my heart, but, but the other part, the, you know, the, the genuine turning of the heart, I think you guys really care about. Yeah, thank you. I, I think so too. Um, well, I, I guess it's it's time to wrap up now, uh, James. I, I've been throwing the uh, the address for your your blog up on the screen for those watching the YouTube. That's uh, patheos com slash blog slash monkey mind. Uh, we will also put a link in the notes so you can find it. Is there anywhere else? Uh, anything else you want to tell people about, or where they can find you, or get your books, or anything like that? Any any plugs before we depart? Oh, well, well, um, um, it, my public, for, for, the last four of my books were all done by Wisdom, which is a Buddhist house out of the East Coast. You go to Amazon, James Ishmael Ford, uh, uh, you know, the, the, whatever I've got is there. I, I, I've recently learned my first book has gone out of print, which makes me a little sad, but, but this is such is life. You know, everything dies. Uh, um, the other four are currently in print. And, and, you know, I don't know. I, I, you know, I mean, thanks. You know, I, if you're interested in my thinking, yeah, my blog has been an archive. It's been going for about 15 years now, something. You know, um, um, I've been more involved. I've been less involved. I'm kind of at a midpoint right now. I get a, get a few postings every week. Uh, Okay. Uh, I'll quickly do my plug before we uh, close off, which is mylandmeditation.substack.com. Uh, I do free, open, secular meditation. It is for everybody. You don't need to have a religious path, but obviously if you have a religious path, you'll probably get a lot out of it. Uh, so and if you don't, you know, hopefully you'll get a lot out of it. But it's uh, it's an hour sit, 11 a.m. Uh, we do it online. I also do it in person. We set up a camera when we're able to do it in person. Uh, come on out. Great for beginners, great for experience. Uh, James, uh, thank you so much. It's been incredible speaking to you. And I uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, goodbye to you and goodbye to everybody out there. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.